After a bit of a swoon in 2019, NC State football back in the thick of the uh, ACC race at a solid 4-2 and two to start the season. They've got a Friday night game uh, at home against Miami this week. We've got Corey Smith on the line from Pack Pride of 247 Sports. Corey, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Mark. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Appreciate you stopping by to break down the Wolfpack. So quarterback is front and center. Devin Leary was off to a nice start. Eight touchdowns, two picks. And again, a surprising start for the Wolfpack coming off that one and seven finish in the ACC last year. So we've got a um, situation where in the blowout loss against North Carolina, Bailey Hockman, uh, 14 of 24 for 215, a touchdown and a pick. Ben Finley played fairly well, but he threw two interceptions against the touchdown. But Dave Doran has made his choice. Yeah, he's going to roll with Bailey Hockman in this game. Bailey, a guy that you know has won two games in the past, but in the other three games where he hasn't won or hasn't you know led NC State to a victory, he's been pulled in favor of another quarterback. So uh, we'll see if that trend holds uh, on Friday. If things are going well, obviously he'll more than likely stay in. If not, uh, there is Ben Finley, Ryan Finley's younger brother, uh, waiting in the wings. Uh, and you know both of them showed, you know, had flashes of of good play uh, this past Saturday. Uh, well, actually, I take that back. Almost two weeks ago now at this point uh, against UNC, but you know neither one of them were able to to have consistent play throughout the game, uh, and that led to you know, a switch between the two of them where Bailey Hockman started the game, came out of the three series. Ben Finley played, I believe, five total series in a row uh, between, you know, the second quarter and the third quarter and then was pulled after uh, consecutive turnovers that, that, he, that he had. Uh, but you mentioned the two interceptions. You know, the one thing about uh, Ben Finley when he came in, led the team on an 80-yard drive down the field or nearly 80-yard drive down the field. Uh, and tossed it right into the end zone. Uh, and I don't know if anybody has seen it yet, but the Dylan Parham tight end for NC State nearly caught it. Should have been an easy catch. He's wide open in space and then just bobbles it, throws it up in the air, and a UNC player intercepts it. So uh, that was one of the interceptions that he threw, whereas uh, Bailey Hockman has thrown a, a few you know, game-changing interceptions. So you hope that that's the big thing for NC State going into this one, regardless of who's under center, because we expect to see Ben Finley come in at times in this game as well, have some package plays for him. Uh, you just, you can't have those turnovers. You can't, you can't miss those opportunities uh, to try to score against this Miami team because we know how good they can be. We appreciate you giving context to the box score because yeah. we, need that. We, we need an interception column of blame, I think, between quarterback, wide receiver, or whatever the case might be, because that's what happens from time to time. You get the interception, certainly they cannot be pegged or shouldn't be against the quarterback. So Hockman and Finley, how do you differentiate their strengths and weaknesses, their styles of play? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the thing with Hockman is obviously, you know, the the pros with Hockman are obviously the fact that he has experience. He's this is again his sixth game starting for NC State. I believe it'll be his twelfth game that he's played for NC State. He obviously had, you know, came in at times last season. Uh, and then has played a couple uh, games this season where he had to come in late against Duke uh, and, you know, threw a touchdown in that game to end up winning that game for NC State. But, uh, you know, the, the big thing that he lacks is the arm strength. Uh, he doesn't have great pocket awareness either, and that's something that Miami's going to look to feast on on Friday night because of the fact that you know, they do have two really good defensive ends on either side that can rush the passer. Uh, so for NC State, you're going to have to get him – you know, comfortable in the pocket, uh, and that starts with the O line. You just hope that you know, he doesn't try to roll out too early if he does have good protection and doesn't take a, a silly sack late in the game. Uh, whereas Ben Finley, you know, one of the biggest things that he does have uh, is the arm strength. He has, you know, he can throw the ball down the field. We saw it happen uh, three different plays in, in the short amount of time that you saw him on the field against UNC, and then again, you know, a fourth play that that could have been a touchdown. I believe it would have been a 16 yard touchdown that he could have thrown. Uh, that was just bobbled and thrown up in the air. So you you see kind of a little bit more of a, you know free willing play, I guess you could say, from Ben Finley, uh, and that's something that you know NC State kind of wants to rein in a little bit more uh, before he you know really gets his first start, uh, which I do think will come later this year, but might not come against Miami because you do want a a a more veteran presence under center. Uh, but both of them have decent athleticism, and that's something that I think NC State's going to try to use uh, on Friday night as well. 
Talking NC State football with Corey Smith. You can catch him on Pack Pride 247 Sports. Of course, the big Friday night game coming up against uh, Miami in Raleigh. Uh, Bam Knight turned in a, a successful freshman campaign. He's pretty much on target to uh, the same type season this year. Almost six yards per carry and three touchdowns. Amika Azizi, uh, top receiver. Uh, we see where um, Angeline leads the uh leads the uh, receiving core and touchdowns uh, from the tight end position with five kind of shape up the offense for us. We got a lot of Miami fans that are going to see your team uh, for the first time. So uh, just give us uh, some insight into the offense. Yeah. Bam Knight, a guy that uh, came to NC state as a freshman, uh, you know, and there was high expectations for him. You know, the hope was that Ricky person would stay healthy, but that just hasn't been the case for the most part throughout his tenure. Uh, you know, Ricky person, if he's on the field on Friday, will be another guy to watch. Uh, good receiving running back as well. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to the lead back for NC State, it's more than likely going to be Zonovan Knight. Uh, the, the hope is to get him going again. Uh, they haven't been able to do it the past couple games uh, facing some of the top, you know, rushing defenses in the ACC. Uh, they're hoping to really be able to kind of come out of the bye week and uh, have him run the ball well against uh, Miami on Friday. And that, that should take some of the pressure off of Bailey Hockman or Ben Finley, whoever's under center uh, at that time. Again, as you mentioned, Emeka Emezi, a guy that uh, has led NC State in receiving this year. The hopes was that, that he would do that last year, and he you know, struggled a lot last year being that lead guy. Uh, had a lot of drops, and I saw a stat actually, interestingly enough, uh, Pro Football Focus put this out this morning. He's had 33 targets uh, towards him, and he has not dropped a pass in those 33 targets this year. Uh, so that, that goes to show you how shorthanded he is if the ball gets to him, but He's more of a, a down-the-field threat. So if Bailey Hockman's not able to get the ball down the field, that's, a, that's an area where you know, NC State might have it taken away from them uh, if he's on the field. Uh, and then Kerry Angelina, a guy that, uh, you know, former USC uh, commit, uh, ended up transferring back over to the East Coast, uh, came to NC State. And, you know, we've seen a lot from him in terms of him being able to make, you know, big chunk yardage plays, 20-plus yard plays, or touchdowns. Uh, there was an interesting stat from that we pulled out from last year. Uh, of the 25 catches that he made last year, uh, 12 of those were either 20-plus yard or touchdowns, uh, and he already has uh, five touchdowns this year and then multiple 20-plus yard catches again this year. So that's kind of – that's what the expectation is. If they're going his way, it's either going to be a big chunk yardage or in the red zone uh, to a six foot seven tight end to make a difference in this game. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the game we love each and every day. Best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the nation. Analysis from myself. Please lock it in. Give us a like. Subscribe. That way you hit the bell for the notifications and know when we're going live. Corey Smith joins us from uh, Pac Pride 247 Sports. So defensively, from a national perspective, I know a lot has changed since uh, these days of Bradley Chubb and that strong defensive front, but that's what people gravitate to in regards to, okay, NC State football, you have Bradley Chubb and a number of great um, NFL prospects along that defensive front, but that's uh, going back a few years. Um, we see Peyton Wilson with 53 stops and a couple picks. He's filled up the box score pretty well, and Jakeen Harris had 15 tackles against North Carolina. Uh, your thoughts on the play of the defense uh, through the first half of the schedule? Yeah, again, it's, you know, kind of a, a tale of, uh, you know, two different styles of game that they played so far. Uh, you know, when you look at the, the four wins that they've had, they've been able to make tackles. They've been able to force turnovers. Uh, in the two games that they've lost, they're not able to make tackles. They're not able to force turnovers. The two games they've lost against Virginia Tech and UNC, uh, it's currently negative six in the turnover column. Uh, you know, the turnover, uh, what is it, the, <laughs> the turnover margin uh, for NC State. Whereas in those games that they've won, uh, Virginia, Pittsburgh, Wake Forest, and, uh, and Duke, they, they're plus three in turnover margin in those four games. So, you know, NC State introduced the, uh, I think it's called the takeaway bone. Uh, we know Miami has the, you know, has the, the turnover chain. So uh, in, <laughs> we'll see who ends up, you know, being able to bring their, their turnover trophy out, I guess you could say, uh, more in this game. And that might dictate which way the game ends up going. But you know, for NC State, the, the issues they've had for the most part have been in tackling. Uh, so they're, they're hoping to be able to, you know, lock that in this coming up week uh, because that's, that's an issue that, you know, as I mentioned, being able to stop te opposing teams' rushing attack has, has been uh, largely uh, dependent on being able to make those tackles in space. 
but you know, you, you're asking about you know some of the key players. I know obviously we saw Jakeen Harris play well in the last game, and and Peyton Wilson has played really well this season as well. He's kind of a guy that you know has has come on the national scene. Uh, but Aline McNeil is a guy to to know uh, in that front six as well. NC State plays a three three five style of defense, uh, so a lot is asked of him being the nose tackle in this defense. A guy that's six foot three, uh, three hundred and twenty pounds, uh, and really locks down the middle of that defense. Uh, if you if if anybody has not seen it yet, go back and look at the the pick six that he made uh, in the game against Virginia. That was one of the highlight plays. A guy that's 320 pounds and, and throws a stiff arm on the quarterback as he's running it in. So uh, that goes to show you just how much athleticism he has as well. Uh, currently ranked right now by Pro Football Focus uh, when it comes to the you know the top overall Power Five uh, defensive lineman. I believe he's still ranked as the number one defensive tackle in the country. Uh, so that's uh, you know pretty. Uh, pretty high praise for a guy that you know plays at NC State. Yeah, now looking at big picture, uh, NC State program, uh, and this is um, my viewpoint from a long distance away, but covering uh, the territory across the Power Five. Uh, you know, NC State appears to be that program that's going to give you seven and five, eight and four almost every year. And they're going to reach that uh, mid-tier bowl game. And that's kind of the perception of the program. Now, how they arrive at that most years, and of course, last year, a down year at four and eight, one and seven, but seems to be go 500 in the ACC and maybe not quite 500. And looking over Dave Doran's tenure there since 2013 at 21 and 35 entering this season in the ACC, I think would not be... Uh, the record that most people would guess NC State and Dave Doran would have lo logged uh, in the conference. And then a lot of FCS and East Carolina and Old Dominion wins non-conference to get to bowl play. So I always like to tap guys like you for the gauge on what are the expectations of the fan base, the realistic fan base, and, and what are the expectations for you? And where do you think this program is in regards to uh, the development and the progress of reaching some of those uh, expectations. Yeah. I mean, I think the expectations coming into this season were really just to, you know, cause you knew you were going to have to play 10 conference games. So I think the expectation for a lot of NC state fans coming into the season was you, you kind of hoped for that, you know, seven and four season. Uh, I think a lot of NC state fans were going just finish above 500. The, the plan was to build towards 2021 in the first place. You wanted to really, again, establish who your quarterback was going to be. They did not do that through 12 games last year. They could not figure that out. They said, you know, hey, we're going to go with Devin Leary these last five games, and that's going to be our guy. Uh, but, you know, he didn't play particularly well down the stretch last year. So they were saying, all right, we got to figure out who our quarterback is going to be for the next year because we've got all these young defensive players that are going to be coming into their own this year. I mentioned Ali McNeil, mentioned Peyton Wilson. You know, we mentioned some of the, the defensive backs that have stepped up this season. Uh, and then, you know, as I mentioned before, we got on the show, Tanner Engel, a guy out of the state of Florida. Uh, and, you know, all these guys have, have stepped up this season and, you know, made this team what it is so far. Getting to four and two, yes, you had the two blowout losses against Virginia Tech and UNC, uh, but you also had the road win against Pittsburgh, which at the time looked a lot better than it does now. Uh, and you've had another road win against Virginia, which might end up looking better than, you know, we thought at the time because they could turn things around with Brendan Armstrong back under center. Uh, so I think if you if you gauge this program, I think it's optimistic right now for the last part of the season because you have five games. You know, once you get past the Miami game, there's four games against, uh, you know, winnable opponents. You have Florida State that has been up and down this season uh, at home. Then you have Liberty, which is currently a top 25 team, but we haven't really seen them play anybody. We'll see that uh, against Virginia Tech this upcoming weekend. And then they go on the road at Syracuse and then finish the season at home against Georgia Tech. So those are all games that if NC State is able to find a way to win, you know, three of those games, then you get to seven and four. If you fin find a way to win the final four, even after losing uh, to Miami, that's an eight and three season. Uh, I think a lot of NC State fans going into the year, if you told them, hey, we're going to find a way to win eight out of you know 11 games and 10 of them are going to be its conference opponents, uh, they'd be pretty happy with that. Uh, so I think, again, you know, especially knowing that uh, that you lost Devin Leary uh, after just playing, you know, three games, uh, three complete games on the season uh, that, you know, you, you have to be pretty optimistic about where the program is headed after that point.
Thank you so much for watching our breakdown of North Carolina State and Miami. For more coverage on the Wolfpack and specifically Dave Doran's tenure in Raleigh and whether he's passed the grade or should be on the hot seat, check out the video we posted at the main channel, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.